<laughs> Hi, Spencer. How are you doing today? Good. How are you doing, buddy? All right. We're going to make this short and sweet. Um, I have some amazing news. First of all, you've already been appraised of the fact that we've launched the Citizen Science Foundation. The Citizen Science Foundation is our vehicle that's primarily centered around this lean mass hyperresponder measurement project. Now, for those who don't already know, a lean mass hyperresponder is basically what we're calling this specific phenotype that we're observing for those people who go on a low-carb diet and see their cholesterol go to super high levels, but also they see their so-called good cholesterol, uh, HDL cholesterol go up, as well as their triglycerides go down, even though their LDL cholesterol, the so-called bad cholesterol, has gone way up. They're called lean mass hyperresponders because at the time that I had written the article and I was talking about it, they tend to appear to be lean mass as opposed to uh, somebody who might be a little more sedentary and overweight. And thus far, that definition seems to have held. Um, so uh, I, I've got some big news. I'm going to save that to the very end, but let's first talk about what it is that you and I were doing originally. Both you and I were, for the, uh, for the last year and a half, I was trying to get a follow-up study on this phenotype and going through traditional channels. I eventually uh, got you to connect with to also try to work a little bit more on the inside and you were trying to do it yourself. And how did you do? Did you get us there? It's very, it's, it's very difficult to get uh, a prospective study on, on, on these individuals. So no, not, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, basically the gist of it is, is the reason for this lean mass hyperresponder measurement project is it is something that is technically not a study at all. We're helping these individuals get tests they otherwise could be getting themselves. And I think that's very important because I actually think that there are many people who, if they could get wide spectrum tests, uh, even if it wasn't the diet that brought them to this place, if there was disease detected, that might be something that they would want to act on and may even go in a different direction. And as you know, I'm all for everybody having as much information as possible. But... There are some who say, who are presumably disease free, at least of everything that they've been able to detect so far. And if they went through these uh, tests as we're proposing them, we're still disease free and we're adamant about not taking any treatment to lower their cholesterol. We're saying, hey, why not go ahead and not only help them get these tests, but possibly get the tests again in say five years and have it as a comparison. Don't you think that sounds like a good idea? Yeah, and I think ethically, uh, these uh, patients should, subjects, patients, you know, I'd call them patients, um, should be able to have uh, the data to know what's going on in their body, if they're harming themselves or not. You know, I have a lot of patients that are lean mass hyper responders, and I give them all of what I, see, I think it's, I think it's a risk, you know, you, you're, what am I, pessimistic, you're optimistic in, in regards to this phenotype. And look, but patients have autonomy. So I think, though, at the very least, we should be able to allow uh, these folks to get the data to, to make an informed decision based on, on the outcomes, um, if they're going to continue it anyway. That's what I think. Absolutely. But even more than that, I think that everyone's very interested. We're all interested in what the outcomes actually are. And yeah, per what you said, I'm cautiously optimistic, as I would put it, uh, particularly when it appears that this is only for metabolic reasons, which is to say it's LDL is not high because they're you know, downstream of metabolic derangement, which we've also seen that version of high LDL. And you know, obviously, I've got a lot of materials on that at cholesterolcode.com. But likewise, you have an article that I asked you to write at Cholesterol Code that makes the case for those people who have high LDL, even if metabolic, to consider uh, reasons to be concerned. And so this is why I'm, I'm actually very glad to be teaming up with you on this, because I think, that, I think it's good for uh, both our heads to be wrapped around not only working out what the best measurements could be, right. but also being able to have something that uh, we could both be influenced by. In other words, if the data is showing rapidly progressing atherosclerosis, I mean, I will be the first to turn the website into a big warning for everybody who has this phenotype. But likewise, you're really one of the only people I know, particularly who's a board certified lipidologist who said, if it goes the other direction, I mean, if you don't see rapidly progressing atherosclerosis in a population that has the equivalent of those people who have the genetic 
uh, disease of familial hypercholesterolemia, which we do see progressive atherosclerosis in, that would definitely alter your opinion, right? Yeah, I'd say it would definitely set up many more studies, and I'd hope a lot of money would be thrown at this because it, it means that there may be something else about uh, the diet that's protective or, like you said, some of your hypotheses. I just, I think it's fascinating stuff, and I really think these folks that are going about this are, are going to be pioneering this because it, it truly diet induced what I call like a ketogenic diet induced hyperlipidemia has not been studied in long term. And no, we're not going to get an outcomes uh, trial any day soon. But if we can start collecting data on at least kind of these surrogate markers of atherosclerosis and, and not just, uh, you know, endothelial function like we talk about, but more the actual, um, uh, you know, the CT angiogram and all these other different things. I think that's, that's, that's some compelling uh, data. At, and heck, I know it won't happen over a year or even two years, but five, however many years we need to, to follow these, these individuals. So, Absolutely. Well, so I want to go ahead and hit a few, a few um, frequently asked questions. Certainly, there already are a lot of existing lean mass type responders who want to know if they can jump into the study. Uh, there's one question that I think needs to get put forward and answered right away. One of them is, uh, does it matter if there is any existing disease or for that matter, any disease that's detected at baseline? And the answer is yes, it definitely matters. Uh, we do want to, uh, we want to emphasize that even though this is not a study, we do care about uh, the ethics of it quite a bit. And so really it's, the individual needs to be disease free at baseline and themselves being fully aware and working with their doctors uh, the entire time and themselves deciding it's with their choice between them and their doctors determining that indeed they don't uh, want to have cholesterol lowering medication. They don't want to take right. steps to lower it. I, I can't emphasize enough that not only do you need to be disease free, but on top of it, that we're not encouraging anyone to continue being a lean mass hyperresponder. That's, Again, a choice between them and medical professionals. This is strictly a capture of data at baseline. And then again, in five years, if they continue forward in that regard, right? Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing that I do with my patients. You know, hey, you, informed consent, I basically give them the, the stuff that I put on uh, that blog for your, uh, for your website. And then they're like, hey, I, I think it's a pretty low risk regardless of what you say. And we go, okay, well, I'll just keep monitoring you. I can't make them do anything. So, uh, but this, this gives a way to um, monitor themselves. Absolutely. Another one that we get a lot right now is, are we using only U.S. citizens, on, uh, US, citizen, U.S. residents only? Or do, are we accepting those who are international? And, uh, Spencer and I have chatted about this a bit. The only thing that we, the only reason we can't quite give a definitive answer yet is we haven't worked out all of the details either for rules that might be involved in the partners we negotiate with who may be providing the testing and what implications there may be as far as, you know, any registration or bureaucracy, et cetera. But the other part of it is that we uh, don't know if the international travel itself could have any impact on those metrics that are taken. This is going to be fairly extensive uh, testing that's happening. And I myself don't know, for example, how much uh, the international travel will impact um, even things like lipid levels. I already have from my own data an example where there does seem to be an anomaly. It was when I was coming back from the Philippines. It was actually one of the very first tests that I had done. And I don't know if it was the travel that actually had that level of impact. So unfortunately at this time, we can't say either way, but Spencer and I, for what it's worth, we lean towards that. We'd like to be able to have people, you know, from wherever they're at, or at least be able to have a larger pool uh, to be choosing from uh, as far as those people who could be involved. Yep. So I'm going to get uh, just one last question. And that's a lot of people are wondering exactly where, the testing would take place. I am going to go ahead and go out on a limb and say, look, don't hold us to this. There's a decent chance that of the places we're looking at, it'll possibly be in Southern California. So regionally speaking, that seems to be where uh, Spencer already has a lot of connections already. And some of the people that we're talking to, it could work out that way, but I really don't want to rule out anywhere else in the United States 
there may be uh, better options, better um, potential for devices or tests or facilities that may also come forward. All we know is that it will almost certainly be within the continental United States. That's about the only thing that I can say for sure. So Spence, I've got to say I'm excited. Now I get to get to the really, really big news. Are you ready? Yep, let's hear it. An anonymous donor has come forward and for the month of November, I'm recording this on Halloween evening, so it's October 31st. For the month of November, they are going to match contributions up to $25,000 for the entire month of November. That's amazing. Look, it is amazing. Look, I'm, I'm, I gotta call it like I see it. I mean, the citizen science community is really stepping up here. So I just, I really hope anybody who's listening to this right now would consider contributing because every dollar you contribute is worth two. And we certainly wanna, you know, take advantage of the generosity of this anonymous donor. Of course, thanks to the anonymous donor, but thank you to everybody who's gonna help us raise this money. This is this could put us over the top inside the month of November. I certainly yeah, that'd be great. Day. Yeah, I just threw in 500 bucks. I mean, I hope other people can do similar. Well, and, and thank you as well. I, I, I kicked in a few shingles, uh, sh shekels, as you'll probably see pretty soon. Um, and it's, 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 it's quite exciting because right now we're already past the uh, quarter mark. I want to say we're at around uh, 12,800. Right. So now we'll be turbocharged. If we can start getting a lot more people uh, to contribute, I really hope they'll consider it. And uh, let's make this a success. Let's make this happen. I hope so. All right, Spence, I'm so glad you're on board with this. And uh, I, I hope the next time we chat, we have a lot more material to discuss. That's for sure. Yeah, thanks for involving me. I, I, you know, I think this is fascinating. Again, I've been seeing this in my patients since I began practicing medicine. And I just I think it's fascinating. So I, I love it. All right, great. Well, I hope everyone has a safe and happy Halloween, and we'll see you later. Have a good one. While finishing up the editing of this video, somebody asked a very good question, which is, is any amount of money going personally to me or to Spencer Nadowski or to Siobhan Huggins or anybody who's involved in the administrative of this? And the answer is an emphatic no. 100% of proceeds are going towards the project and by proceeds, I, I mean more specifically, uh, the only people we would be directly compensating are those who are instrumental in making the project happen from uh, a services standpoint, uh, such as, you know, paying uh, the doctors or researchers that operate the devices and so forth. Basically, uh, to, to put further emphasis on it, we all have either existing jobs or like in the case of Siobhan and I, we have uh, uh, patrons and members. I mean, part of the reason I created the Citizen Science Foundation was so that it'd be autonomous and not intermingled with anyone's personal finances. So once again, all contributions, 100% of proceeds will be going towards this project.